What's going on, everybody? Like I said, today, half the country is going to wake up feeling disenfranchised. But this is the face you have when you abstain from voting. And you know that you didn't do anything to jump into the middle of what Americans are going to be fighting over. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at what the rest of the world feels like is going on to America. As you can see in the title, Lefty Land loses it over Donald Trump victory. I think when it's all said and done, what you're going to see is a huge divide mm -hmm. over people who are college educated and not college educated. Black voters came through for Kamala Harris. White women voters did not. Pure Project 2025 in miniature in Florida. And that kind of extreme sort of extremist right wing fascist type government in Florida. Does that make it a more attractive place? Mm -hmm. Thinking about the people who are not a part of anybody's elite who are hurting tonight. Um, uh, there are African-American women who know a little bit about being talked down to and know a little bit about having their economic dreams crushed, who tried to dream a big dream over the past couple of months. And tonight they're trading in a lot of hope for a lot of hurt. And that may be true, certainly for African-American women. The idea that there was on the verge of a potential first female presidency and a first female president of color. I, I, I get it, okay? And what I'm saying is not about those people. But the reality was is that in many ways uh, the people who they turn to for information have lied to them. Have lied to them about the chances of what was happening in this election. The New York Times polls that we've talked about you know, day in and day out. When you actually dug into the detail 80% of people had made their decision about what they were going to do in the American election months ago. So it didn't matter what happened with the comedian at Madison Square Garden. It didn't matter necessarily whether Trump had a good day on the trail or a bad day on the trail. They had made their choice. And they had made their choice because the government that they hired to replace Donald Trump did not deliver for them. They saw a man who, whether many people like it or not, was a man who had been tested over and over again from courtroom to the media not even treating his candidacy as one that deserved to be listened to about what he was promising. Like every day, and I've been diving deep into this for months, every day he would make an announcement about say no tax on social security. At it, no mention, just a silly comment that was made by someone somewhere else because there's no possible way that Donald Trump would be able to have a message that anyone would want to hear. But of course they did. As for Trump, when he eventually took the stage, I think the best part of two o'clock in the morning, he, uh, he took to the stage and he got rid of the teleprompter. He was surrounded by his family who he loves the most and of course the supporters who built a, a coalition around him that I'm going to talk about a bit tonight because when the left wins they talk about how clever everyone was and when the right wins they, wins, they think that there's some sort of you know, aberration or cheat or a mistake that's been made. Quite the opposite. I'll get to that in a second. But some of the stuff that happened in the speech, just a little longer than uh, you may well hear in other places. Here's an example of him talking about that coalition, the coalition that stretches from, say, a Robert F. Kennedy all the way through to the boss of the UFC. This campaign has been so historic in so many ways. We've built the biggest, the broadest, the most unified coalition. They've never seen anything like it in all of American history. They've never seen any young and old, men and women, rural and urban. And we had them all helping us tonight, when you think. Remember when he was shot and he was going to give his speech to the Republican National uh, Convention? It was all about, you know, has he changed? Well, yeah, he has. Because like every human being who goes through life, what happens to you changes you. And think about it. Millimeters from dying. 
the stakes of the election being if he lost, he was going to go to prison for the rest of his life. The example of him as a slightly changed person because of those events was pretty obvious in this bit of his speech too. Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. And that we're going to fulfill that mission. Let me just stop you there. You have no country. It's a stolen land. And before you build that border wall, make sure that you send everybody that is of your skin tone. Well, not orange, but you know, the under skin tone. Back here, English and their European natural lands. And one last thing about his speech, and I've been thinking about this for a little while. What does the word fight mean? Now, obviously, in its worst possible sense, it's about confrontation. But Anywho, that's about it for this one. We're going to get this over with. Appreciate you guys sticking around. This is what you guys, the country, going to look like for the next four years. And it's just the way it is. Well, you can't say your guys' country because it's not yours, it's mine. <laughs> there it is. Um, but I can borrow it for a little bit. Because <laughs> it's some samples. <laughs>